King of glory, we give you praise. We give you all the adoration. We magnify your holy and mighty name. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for giving us the grace to come together to know more about you because we love you. Uh, you, are, you are the one that first of all loves us. Father, Lord, bestow upon us all the promises and the covenant that you have placed. Give us the grace to be able to enjoy them in the mighty name of Jesus. Open our eyes of understanding. Open our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes. Grant us access into all these blessings that comes with your covenant and give us the grace to be able to, to be able to be obedient to fulfill the bylaws of your covenant in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, wonderful Father, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Um, our today's ministration, we're going to we're going to go a little bit into the world of um covenants. Um we're going to preach covenant in a or see covenant in a different in a different perspective. What brought up this? What brought up this um was that uh, we want to clarify some of the notions um that many people in the book of Hebrew um when Apostle Paul was saying that if it was not because the old test, the old covenant was faultless, then there won't be a new, a new one. And uh, let us all go there. Let us all go there. Hebrew chapter eight, Hebrew chapter eight, um, uh, for, uh, verse seven. That is what brought about the new, the new covenant. It is not because um, the the new covenant uh, there was a fault um, with the new covenant. Note, note, note this. God is not author of mischief. God is not an author of mischief. God is not an author of mistakes and error. Um, we've been preached to that uh, uh, it was because the law, the old law, there was a there was a problem with the old law. No, sir, no ma. There was no problem with the covenant, whether the old or the new. Hello. When I was I, I used to believe this before that there was a problem with the old covenants because that is the understanding that many people are carrying about that the old testament was faultless and they picked that up from the book of uh, Hebrews chapter eight verse seven that for if that first covenant had been faultless then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, did you see that? Because they don't read it further. Finding, finding fault with them, finding fault with them is not finding fault with the covenant. Rather, it's finding fault with the people unable to obey. As a result of their disobedience, they are not fulfilling the old Testament. I'm breaking it down for people now because oftentimes we just they just quote this Bible for us. Uh, they want to show they want to show off like they can they can cram. It's the you know God didn't ask us to come and cram the verses. He told us to 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 study and to show ourselves approved. You cramming the whole um, Bible and reciting it. Uh, is, is something that everybody can do. But who has got time to be doing that? As a, but I, of what excess is that? Of what importance is that? I would rather glorify in people understanding every phrase, sentence, clauses in the Bible than me reciting uh, uh, this and that and uh, we are wasting so much time that we don't have we don't have that time mankind maximum on surface of the planet has got only 120 years max and it has even been cut short even lower than that now and you need to meet up there is something, there is a race we need to meet up 
to be able to show ourselves that we are worthy of the candidate of that kingdom of God that Jesus Christ promised us is going to prepare. He's, he has gone to prepare that place for you and I. Our aim as a Christian is to make sure that that place that Jesus Christ, our high priest, has gone to prepare for us. You are a candidate of the place. Nothing, no, nothing else. No more, no addition no, to raise people that we meet the standard of that kingdom. Hence, there's a covenant to be to go and uh, to go to, to, to go along with. There's a covenant that we need to talk, we need to understand, we need to understand it. There was no fault with the covenant itself. But that mankind, he said, that said, but because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Did you get it now? It wasn't the, the apostle, apostle Paul was not emphasizing on the fault of the covenant itself, but of those that are um, 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 those that are part of the covenant, those that are the principal of the covenant, and 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 the and and those that are to fulfill them, which happens to be us, we are not doing. Our forefathers are not doing according to according to what the covenant was actually, um, you know, uh, stipulated. An example of it, I was talking uh, 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 in, the, in, the, in the Bible studies, we were, we were explaining this, uh, like a, I, can, I can explain it like a marriage contract. A covenant is like a contract. Coven covenant is like um, a, a, a treaty of a country. Covenant is like a, a constitution of a country and everyone that are going to abide by that covenant of the country you will enjoy the blessings of the con of the country number one as simple as traffic light when it is red it is amber and it is green when it is red do not move it is a law you go against that you you are driving while it is red then there will be a, you are contravening that covenant. You are contravening that law, and the consequences of it is punishable. Are you getting? Likewise, the covenant of of the Old Testament. And but what are the enjoyment of the old covenant? We read that last week. The covenant, the enjoyment of this old covenant is that that your days may be prolonged in the land of the living and that it may be well with you. That we read in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 40. From verse 40, those are the benefits that are attached to the covenant of the Old Testament. There are, very, there are many covenants in the Bible. You understand me now? But the one I just want to, I'm not going into, I'm not going, I'm not dabbling into the whole covenant, uh, the one God made with man, the one God made with the nature, the one God made, because many people just thought that, oh, all the, com when we talk about covenant, it is only to uh, with the man that God made covenant with. No, God made covenant even with the earth itself, without you, without the human being. I aside, he made covenant with the earth and he made covenant with mankind. So when God made covenant with what he created, he created that in the uh, upon a covenant that I will not do this. Uh, this is what you should do. This is what the earth should do. Part of what the earth should do is to provide us son. It is a covenant with God. He created it that every day, you son, you need to come out. If you cannot come out the whole globe, some people are sleeping now. While we are having the sun, they have moon. While by the time they have sun, we will be having the moon. And that is it. So God made all those things and they obey the elements of the universe. They don't fault their, their covenant. Hence, you and I, we are enjoying. So there is a covenant that God made. God, God made a covenant with Adam. God made covenant with Noah. Um, and God made 
covenant with Abraham. God made covenant. Even he made covenant with Palestinians and he made mosaic covenant. He made covenant with David and then we now have the new covenant which we are now into. But the significance of the new covenant and the old covenant was that. In the old covenant for the mankind now, not the earth. You understand? There's a difference between, you know, I've told you the, there's earth, the earthly covenant and then there is a covenant that God made with people. One of them is Abraham. Among them is Adam and Eve. And then another, another one he made with nations as he made covenants with Palestinians and then he made covenants with Israel. You understand? Then he made covenants with even the religion that is the Mosaic covenant. He made covenant with David. He made he now made a new covenant. The new covenant is the era we are now. Praise the Lord. And this new era, the good, the 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 goodness and the and I mean the the better promise of the new covenant is the is the grace that activates mercy. Hello. When you hear that uh, the new covenant. Jesus Christ is the mediator of a better covenant, that is the new covenant. It means that the grace of Jesus Christ, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, activates mercy on our behalf, where we are unable to fulfill all righteousness. Praise the Lord. So we've, we've clarified that. But the where I want to um, help mankind today, according to the direction of the Holy Spirit is, number one, to make sure that the Old, the Old Testament is not faulty and it is not abolished. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus Christ told us in the book of Matthew chapter chapter 5, from verse, verse 17, he said, don't, don't misunderstand why I have come. I don't understand why people do not even look into this. He said, do not misunderstand. That is, don't make mistake. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses. Hello. The law of Moses is the law that sustained the old covenant. Are you getting it now? And this is Jesus Christ here speaking, telling us in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, that, look, do not think that I have come. Don't miss... Hmm? It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. He said, do not misunderstand my coming. It's just like you step into a place, people, they, 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 they can't comprehend why you are there. They don't understand your presence there. And you are telling them that do not misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses. He did not say I did not come. Okay, why did God, I mean, why did our Lord Jesus Christ didn't say, I did not come to abolish the law God made with the universe. Because the law of the universe has nothing to do with mankind. Rather, to benefit mankind. That is the covenant that God made with the universe. Just the covenant that he made with man with mankind. The, 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 another earthly Covenant is that everything that God has created, they are for our use. The, 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 the covenant of the leaves in the, in the forest for the animals. So when you see any animal, God did not create any animal to be eating human being. That is why he said, I will, I will even ask of your blood from any animal that feeds upon your blood. Yes. It's in the Bible. God said he will request your blood from the animal, not to talk of human being. So you see where human being are making a lot of mistakes or their forefathers. So what, what am I trying to help? Some, I'm, what am I saying here? I'm trying to help some people. Paraventure, our forefathers at some point, at some time, you understand, have contravened this covenant that no man, no man, should either kill or shed another man's blood or not to even have part of their 
or part of another man's component in their system, just as some animal. That's why God forbid some from some animal not to be eaten because those animals have been um, they have gone contrary to the to the covenant of God not to eat human being. Example of of them are these wild animals. God does not want us to eat all those wild animals. What are the animals that God even do? So why don't you ask? God being so great and in the Old Testament and said that, oh, because of your sin, oh, hmm, I want something that is very, very, very great. Something that is, a, so I want you for your, for your peace offering, you should be killing lions. And for your sin offering, you should be killing the tigers. No. He doesn't want to do anything with those ones. He said, boo. He said, bull, goat. You will, the moment you see a goat eating human being, then you know that something is wrong. Or you see a bull eating a human being. <laughs> so, and something has, something has changed. Or you see a dove licking the blood of a human being, then you know that. And that is why we cannot even eat some, some, some birds of the air. Like vulture, you can't eat the vulture. You can't. You are not. You are forbidden eating those kind of species of animals. Why? Because of the contamination in the lineage or the, the generation of those species of that animals. Some people are going through a tough period, and some generation, some of these people. That's why I fear the generation coming because. Some of the our own generation that they because of power, they are dabbling into things that they should not. They didn't know that even they themselves and their children, children are going to they are going to partake in it. They always think that God uh, they can fast and pray that God overlooks some certain things. No. That was the reason God now said that let there be a new covenant. You understand? It was as a result of mankind unable to fulfill this Hebrew chapter 8, verse 7. Not, not that there was a fault in that covenant. There was no fault. It was only too difficult for them, which in God's eyes should be very easy to accomplish or to fulfill, just like your marriage vows. It's very simple to fulfill your marriage, your marriage vows that holds the covenant of marriage. Marriage is a covenant. Just like people say that marriage is a contract. Yeah, contract is also synony synonymous to covenant. It's an agreement. Are you getting it now? A marriage is not with one person. It's between two parties. Covenant is between two par parties. Contract is between two parties. Both of you need to work hand in hand to fulfill that vow that you are making in order to sustain the covenant that you have established. So, and then uh, there was a circulation. Uh, I just stumbled on it. I said, oh, uh, uh, is divorce a sin? Uh, does God... No, God does not like divorce. Why? Because it's a covenant. Marriage is a covenant. Both of you have entered into covenant. It does, it's not a sin. You understand? When you when you break the when you broke the covenant between yourself, it's not it's not a sin. Most especially the marriage one, it's not a sin. But God doesn't like it. Many people are saying it's a sin. Some people say their pastor said it's a sin. I said they didn't read the Bible concerning that before talking. I wish they go back and the covenant. Um, there's a covenant that man made with himself. God still observes it. God still holds, holds it. You understand me now? But he doesn't hold it in the way he holds the covenant that he, he, he made with us. Praise the Lord. So I'm going somewhere. I'm, I'm, today, I would want you to read, I mean, to listen to this ministration to the end. The reason is that I'm leaving the Jews of this 
administration to the end so that you can know and you can benefit from it. And um, a lot of people around you will also benefit. Your children, children will benefit from, 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 from it. Praise the Lord. So, and I would like you to share it as well so that they too, you'd never know. It, will, it, 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 might help, it might help them as well. Praise the Lord. It might help them. You understand? So covenant is very, very important. God holds it. But what you are doing in that covenant, it's what matters to God. Are you getting it now? All the vows that you have vowed, um, example, is that you made a vow to, you made a vow that for better, for worse, with a man. And then along the line of that marriage covenant, you, the, you, you are now bringing a man into the house. You know you are broken the covenant. Or the man is bringing a, another woman into the matrimonial bed. You know you have violated the, 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 the vow and you violated the, the covenant. And there is, there is always a, con a consequence, whether between you, a man and a man, or... I mean, whether between a human being, a covenant between human being, there is always a covenant. I mean, um, uh, there is always uh, uh, um, a consequence. Should any of the parties going against it, you, they can't miss it. I pray that it does not even go beyond that generation. You understand me now? So, um, God already told us that. He said, I am a jealous God. I am and I, I, I visit the iniquities of 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 the of the forefathers from generation to generation up to the fourth generation you understand so when we sin don't think that it is only you that will bear that consequence there are some others that will that will partake in it it happens to the israelites their children, children. Those one that those one that committed the sin, they are not even the one that are that they are suffering it in most cases, according to the studies. It is mostly the generational sin that that was giving them problems. They were trying hard to work it out, but because of their generational sin still hunting them. Is not making things to work properly. And you can see the similarities in the life of many in the whole world. Praise the Lord. So verse, verse, verse 8 of that Hebrew chapter 8 now say that, because finding fault with them, he says, behold. And I've explained what that means. Find, finding fault with them does not mean find, finding fault with the covenant, but finding fault with the party that's supposed to sustain the covenant. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Verse 9. He said, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This was retreated in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5. You understand? The Ten Commandments. The new one. Well, the, why was there? Why was Moses trying to tell them about the new covenant here? Because the covenant that he made with, the first covenant he made with the generation that came out of the, of the, uh, of the slavery, those people are gone. These are the new generation. These are the young ones now that are to step into the promised land. Hence, Moses, before this was the, time, the period that Moses was packing his loads, because God already called him that you are, you are not going into that promised land. You can only see, and that happened as a result of sins as well. For them to be able to hold on to this covenant that God talking about here, both in the book of Exodus that he gave them, which was retreated in the book of Numbers, in the book of Leviticus, and also to another generation in the book of Deuteronomy, and also to another generation in the book of Joshua, when the, when the era of Joshua, after the, after the death of Moses. This generation were being told constantly, Remember your Lord God. This is what he wants you to do. You do this, it shall be well with you. It shall be well with your children. It shall, your days shall be prolonged and it shall be well with you all the days of your life. 
it, the, the, that's the benefit of it. You understand me now? There's so many that are under it. But in this, in this era, when they left Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, because they did not continue in my covenant, it is the, the problem is not the covenant. God was not at fault, according to the book of Hebrew, chapter uh, verse 7, chapter 8, verse 7. It was not the covenant that had a problem. It was the people. They are not fulfilling the covenant. They did not. It is plainly written here in the book of uh, Hebrew, chapter 8, um, verse 9. Is it because they did not, who? The children of Israel did not continue in my covenant, and I dis regarded them, says the Lord. That is the consequences of not continuing in the covenant of the Most High God. For this is the covenant that I will make with the heart of Israel. That is the new one that God thinks now that is going to be simpler for them. Okay, now let us pause here. You see, this verse 9, from the beginning to, to, the, to the part B of that verse 9, for them to be able to continue in that covenant, they would have to, according to the exegesis, they would have to fulfill almost 2,700. Can you imagine that? How many of us can do that? Or how many of us can fulfill that? For you to see that it was not an easy thing at all that they went through. Or that they did not even understand what they were being told about 2,000, according to the Bible, about 2,713 commands in the law of Moses to be able to continue in the old covenant. That's a lot too. Honestly speaking, that is a lot. Okay. That, that was in the Old Testament, the law of Moses, to be able to continue in the covenant. So now, in the New Testament, <laughs> I, I laughed. In the New Testament now, <laughs> for you to see that uh, mankind, we, we, need to, uh, uh, we need to focus. For us to be able to fulfill all the, I mean, the covenant of the new, uh, 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 the new, the new era that we are in, the new, we have to fulfill nine hundred and thirty commands in the New Testament for the Christians to obey. Oh no, God have mercy. We have nine hundred and thirty. That is why some people think that. Uh, um, going to church or coming closer to God or knowing God is, is a joke. Hence, they are bringing in all these co com comedians. You have turned it to something or that they were practicing then. The, what, the, what the book of Hebrew was talking about, you are, you are fulfilling them. Because there was no time to be doing that. There was no time. I've told you, 930 we have to. Reckon with man can have 100 max, 120 years max on the surface of the planet. Max, in fact, it has reduced to 70. It is in the Bible. The lifespan of a man is 70. It is the grace of God that makes you to go beyond. Why? That you may not continue in the atrocity. You know, people used to live thousand years, but God sees the atrocity that they are doing. That at the it's like cutting it down. He cut it down as a result of, as a result of helping. Say that these people, they they continue doing this. Okay, let me reduce it, and he was reducing it. Now, he reduced it to one twenty, and now you will see that from seventy, you will see people. It is the grace of God that makes someone to even get to 90 now. Are you getting it? Are you getting it now? So it was because there was a problem of fulfillment of the vows. 
to uphold the covenant. Praise the Lord. He said, for this, the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their heart. And I will be their God, and they shall be my God. You see, until the whole world shall be my people. Yeah, my people. You understand? Until the whole world come to this. Praise the Lord. Is it none of them shall shall teach his neighbor? None of them shall teach his neighbor, and none his brothers, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me until this until this era. The world is not going to perish. Oh. The God is not in the habit of destroying the world. Oh. Contrary to what you are hearing in most of these churches, or we grew up with that the world is coming to an end. If God's word does not accomplish, nothing is destroying. Everybody will pass by another generation will be coming like a like a circle like a roller coaster circle like that it, nothing is destroying it's not destroying anybody are you getting me now say from the least of them to the greater of them from the least of them to the greater of them whereby now you're still struggling to preach to to even your children to understand you. But God is telling us that there will be a time, even your neighbor beside you, in front of your house, in, behind your house, on top of your house, in the net, you, are, you, you, you will not need to preach to them again among the preaching. Now, look at the way the preaching and the word of God is spreading all over the world. We have the internet. We have the books. We have the electronic books. We have so many things that, 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 evangelize to the to the world but still some are still rejecting god are you getting it now the aim is for us to be like heaven as it is in heaven for it to be on earth are you getting it now that the whole we the boat will now be matched doing the same thing praise the lord in heaven there is no disobedience any disobedient they are cast out until that the whole evil ones have been cast out on earth. You understand me now? The world is not coming to an end or God destroying the earth or anything. It's, it's not happening. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. This is where they are now talking. They will say that, oh, because uh, your sin, uh, God will be merciful to your sin. No. It is those that are engaging in that in that unrighteousness. Their generation, he will be merciful to the gener to the newer generation that now have God in their heart, that they will not need to preach to them that He is God in heaven. Look at it from Book of Exodus. He said, Moses, go to Pharaoh and go to my people, go to the Israel. That I am God in heaven. You are serving the God on earth. I created them. He was, and he told them, he said, I'm a jealous God. I'm a consuming fire. I'm a jealous God. Lest I perish or I destroy all of you. He said, I, I'm going to go and tell them that, Moses. Go, stand up, move, leave everything you're doing. Go to Pharaoh, tell them the God in heaven. Want him to leave, to, to set his people to serve him. He said, he, he has chosen them. He only chose them for a purpose. That you and I, the whole world, we emulate from what we are seeing in them and be wise. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I, said, so I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. He will not remember them, the forefathers' sins. He will not remember so that he will, it will not be a burden on the newer generation. That is what that area is teaching us. Praise the Lord. Said for that verse, he said, in, in that he says, a new covenant he has made the first obsolete. Now, what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. No, this is opposed to Paul here. Okay, are you getting it now? It's not going to be 
obsolete in the form that is going to be packed aside. If, if it were so, Jesus Christ would not mention in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, that don't misunderstand why I have come, because he brought the new covenant. Are you getting it now? Jesus Christ brought in the new covenant. He made the new covenant of God with us. He said, he said don't misunderstand in the book of Matthew 5, 7. He said, don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses. He didn't say, I did not come to abolish the law of the world. He did not say that I did not I, I come to abolish the law of um, Abraham. I, I did not come to abolish the law of David. He didn't say that. He didn't say, I did not come to abolish the law of Adam and Eve. No, he said, I did specifically. He said, I did not come to abolish the law of Moses, which means the law of Moses was not obsolete. Rather, look at what he said he came to do. He said, rather, or the writing of the prophet. He said, no, I came to accomplish their purpose. So the old, the old covenant had gotten a purpose which were not fulfilling or which were too difficult for mankind. Look at it. I said that for them to be able to fulfill the old uh, uh, covenant, they would have to uh, be obedient to 2,713 commands and laws. In the New Testament, it has now been reduced. Do you know how many percentage is that? To 930. Hello? to 930, it was reduced to 930 in the New Testament, the laws and commandment that we will have to, we will have to fulfill in order to hold the new covenant. Praise the Lord. So when we are, if, if, if Jesus Christ only came to simplify it for us and then look at, look at the grace he gave us. Now, that 930 commands and bylaws, you can you you now have on top of it, like we call it a sundae on top of the ice cream. You now have on top of it grace. You have what you have the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ was uh, uh, is the one standing on on top of the or uh, on top of the wonderful ice cream covenant that God gave to us, such that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will activate mercy. Where you are incompetent, where you are not able to fulfill those bylaws in order to still be in the covenant. Okay, now let me see the time. So now let me now give you the 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 where I want to help people now. We have talked about covenant in another dimension. Where I want to help people now is that uh, you know. What brought this about was that uh, um, oftentimes I just remember some of the prayers that I used to pray um, while I was in another denomination and in so many other churches as well. And then they would say that, oh, um, um, let us pray that God make a new covenant with us. Or that um, we, we, should, we should pray to God to open our mind to a new covenant. Then the Holy Spirit said, I, I, was, I was trying to pray the new prayers. Then I realized that the Holy Spirit said, stop. What are you doing? What are you doing? God doesn't make any new covenant uh, uh, with, with mankind again. I said, what? He said, no, God does not make any new covenant. It is only one covenant that he made, which is the our Lord Jesus Christ has put the new covenant is the new covenant he is making. So you will now have to go into your prayers to pray that Holy Spirit to remind you, for Holy Spirit to remind you the one that you have activated, that you have left, that is causing the problem. For every time that man are unable to fulfill the, the, the vows of the covenant that you activated, there is a consequence. So which is it? Which is it? Is it the, 
then I had, you need to go into the one that is down, not the a new one. God is not a talkative. He is not going. Some a lot of people will be praying that I'm, I'm waiting. I didn't hear from him. Say, Pastor, I didn't hear from him. You didn't hear from who? He already spoken. You only need to find it. What, what is this saying concerning your family? What is this saying concerning your, your job? What is this saying concerning your marriage? What is God saying concerning? It's in the Bible. He's not going to repeat it to you. He, you can pray that Holy Spirit direct me into the covenant that I have entered. How to, how to fulfill them, how to obey them, that it may be well with me and my children, children. You can pray. In that way, but not that. Oh, eh, God, make a new covenant with me. God is not making a new covenant. It is you that you make a new covenant with God. You understand me now? It is you. You can make a new covenant with God. How? Let me uh, let me help some people there. How you can make a new covenant? Remember Hannah. God did not make covenant with Hannah to have Samuel. She made the covenant with God to have Samuel. Are you getting it now? So mankind are given the freedom to make common. But the problem there is that you and your children, children have to be able to continue that covenant because God doesn't like breaking of covenant. But he will not make a new covenant apart from the covenant he made with Jesus Christ. But paraventure, you have doubled into one of those Covenant, one of the command commandment of the of the vows of to to uphold the covenant, and then you backslid it. You know, God we God told us about uh, the Bible made us to understand about the consequence of backsliding people in the in the Bible. When they said you backslide, it does not mean that you are not reading your Bible anymore or this and that, or you don't want to hear about God. It's because you are not following the vows. Of the that makes the covenant of the New Testament to hold anymore, which you have tried, or your forefathers have stepped inside. So rather you praying that God to make a new covenant with you, you decide within yourself to look into the into the the vows of the covenant of the new covenant. Which one have you started doing? Which one you 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 are no more doing? Reactivate it. And you will see how wonderful it will be. Let me let me explain something to you. Before I have this orientation, I have this mindset that I, if I if I serve a man with all my might, with all my resources, with everything in me, I make the set man to be happy. When once the set man is happy, then it will be well with me, totally. Totally disaster. As I'm talking about myself now. I'm not talking about anybody. My, that was from every preaching I was listening to. My mindset now came to a conclusion that the only way I can see God or I can serve God or I can make God's eyes to shine upon me is to serve a man, which is what they are still preaching. In the Bible, in the in the in many churches now, but I am telling you, I'm helping some generation and some people that you are only causing yourself and the children and other generation to come through you. Why? Because God already said, "Do not serve any man in the covenant. Do not serve any man. Do not." In fact, God even said, "Don't have." In the old, in the old covenant, do you know that it is a taboo for them to have to call anybody a father? God did not allow them to call any. He said, "Do not." Call. When I was reading that, I was shocked. He said, "Do not call any man on earth father." I said what? I said those ones that now gave back to you. What would you call them? He said because I am the only father. Then you will see people. Our father in the Lord, our father this, our mother in the. You see, if you see some people, some pastors that really know the Bible, they will never allow you to call them father in the Lord or mother in the Lord. They will never. It is the covenant, because they on they understood, they read, the covenants bylaws properly, so. 
instead of you waiting for God to now cut a new covenant with you, as I was talking about myself, then I now made a covenant to myself that, I mean, with God, that God, I'm not going to serve a man again. I want to serve you. Really reveal yourself to me and let me serve you. And he did that. And he did that. So you, all you need to do, when you see, because this period, oh my God, I, won't, I don't want to go into what happened in those periods, but the, 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 the good news I want to uh, help people today is that serving a man will not bring you closer to God at all. Serving a man will not bring you closer to God. On, and it is only on that one Bible verse you know, that I am a jealous God. Don't bow down to any idol. When you are serving a man, you are creating an idol of, of that person. And God said, I am a jealous God. Don't provoke me to jealousy. Do not provoke me to jealousy. I pray that God will continue to enlighten you Pray that God to reveal himself to you in a new way. If you want to make a covenant, you, have, you can go free. You have to feel free to, to make covenant with God. But make sure you are able to fulfill that covenant that you are making. I made an example of Hannah to you. And she did the same. She fulfilled the covenant. And you can see what happened in the life of that family. It is only God that can do it, not man. All power belongs to God. Anything that you want to say or you want to do, direct it to God. Whatever you are going through, direct it to God. By the power of agreement, everything will be splendid. I pray that the grace to fulfill the covenant will come upon all of us. Remember, it is not about your doing. It is about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be potent in your mouth when you are walking in the path of righteousness and your uprightness is the light of your righteousness path. Praise the Lord. What would have God wanted me to do concerning this situation brings you more closer to God because then you have a change of heart. You have a change of thought you will be Christ-like. The moment you are Christ-like, the moment you are walking in the in that mentality and in that notion, you are fulfilling the, the bylaws and the, the, the vows of the new covenant. God bless you.